Okay, so this is the third part on, uh, of the course 5A on quad correlation tests, and we will see in this part what is the correlation test uh, between two graphs. So, we have seen that uh, in order to get rid of the dependence between uh, the graph G and G prime, we wanted to observe. We permuted the matrix, we shuffled the matrix so as to have a distribution uh, on which to compare the correlation between G and G prime and the correlation between G and the uh, permuted matrices. So by do, by shuffling the matrix, we remove the network defects and we remove the relationship between the dependent variables and the independent variable. So basically, the quad correlation test uh, proceeds in three steps. The first step is to simulate the null hypothesis, that is shuffling the adjacency matrix of G prime. And by doing that, you are sure that the correlation among these observations of null hypothesis distribution is correctly handled, which means that inside this distribution, you've got independent observation. The second step is when you compare the correlation between G and G prime with the correlation with a uh, coefficient with the matrix that you can use, that, that you draw, that you drew from the null hypothesis distribution. And you make this a lot of times into the distribution of a permuted matrix, and you count the number of times, in terms of quantiles of the distribution, the number of times where the correlation is greater or lower than the correlation between the independent and the dependent variable. In case of extreme high or low uh, quantile value, you can reject the null hypothesis. So you can reject the real hypothesis under which there is no correlation between G and G primes. So a couple of hints on interpretation. Um, so, so in case of extreme high or low quantile, you reject the null hypothesis. That is, uh, that is to say, you can say that there is a correlation between G and G prime, and this correlation is not due to random. Uh, otherwise, when you have not a high or low quantile, you can say that if correlation between G and G prime is close to the correlation between G and any of the permuted matrix, it's not that much correlated because any other matrix uh, that has been shuffled and uh, which is really independent, uh, the one with the other, you cannot observe um, such a level of correlation. Uh, so remember that correlation is it interpreted as the likelihood of the co-presence of links in the two networks. So in case of a positive relay correlation, a link in G uh, will increase the likelihood to see the same link in G prime. In case of negative, it means that the links are complementary, and in case of no correlation, links are independent. You already know that from the first part of the course, I guess. Here is a little example. Uh, I've made uh, two networks, G and G prime, and uh, I first drew this uh, network G, and I generate the network G prime with a probability of uh, 0.8, uh, which means that for each link here, there is 80% uh, of chance that is, it is conserved here. So I introduced a, a correlation between the two networks by constructions. Let's see what uh, the correlation test will produce uh, when I run it on these two networks. This is the output of the QAP test function of the R software in the package SNA, Social Networks Analysis. So the first um, two results uh, that is produced is the p-values. So these values are, uh, correspond to this expression. You've got two p-values because uh, you consider high or low quantile uh, of the null hypothesis distribution. So the first one is the probability that the correlation observed between permuted matrices and G is inferior to the correlation observed between G and G prime. And this probability is under a certain level of confidence alpha. The second probability is basically the same, um, but instead of inferior or equal, <coughs> uh, you you take the probability that the correlation between permuted matrix and G is superior to, up to the correlation observed between G and G prime. And this probability is under uh, an acceptance level alpha. Usually we take alpha to be 5%. Uh, this is the case for directed graph, and when you've got undirected graph, you take one p-value and uh, you reject the hypothesis when alpha is inferior to um, when the probability is inferior to alpha divided by two. 
Okay, the last, the two last outputs is the proper value of correlation. So this is the correlation between G and G prime, and you can see that it's about uh, 0.8, a little bit more. So this is uh, quite normal since I generated G prime to be uh, 0.8 times the network G. And finally, the last output is the distribution of correlation between a G and the permuted matrix of the distribution. Another example, when I, uh, where I constructed G prime to be uh, still correlated to G, but with a lower uh, probability of keeping the link. <coughs> so uh, here I take a probability of 0 0.4. So each link in G prime as 40% uh, of chance to stay in uh, G prime. Uh, sorry, uh, each link in G have a 40% probability to stay in G prime. Uh, the ORF software uh, produce a plot of the density of correlation. So uh, remember that the last part of the output of the function was the distribution of correlation. Uh, of permitted uh, of uh, correlation between G and the permitted matrix distribution, you can plot that one in fact. So here you, you observe the density of uh, the the test statistics that is in this case correlation. So basically you plot the correlation of the um, permitted uh, matrix uh, distribution, and this dashed line is uh, the observe, observed co correlation between G and G prime. So in this case, you can see the shape of the distribution, and since the, the observed correlation in that the far extreme right of uh, the distribution, we can reject the hypothesis. So there is a correlation uh, between G and G prime, and this correlation is um, you can be confident into this correlation because the p-value are re really high and low, zero and one, and uh, the observed correlation is of uh, zero thirty-five. So it's quite uh, close to uh, our generate G prime. Um, we could uh, measure the correlation or the similarity between uh, permuted, permuted matrix distribution and, uh, and G with other measures than uh, simple correlation. We could, for example, use the um, uh, coefficient of uh, Pearson, rho, rho xy, uh, the Jacquard index between the two uh, between two matrices, the Goodman and Kruskal gamma and the Hamming distance uh, should work uh, well. So that's it for uh, quap correlation. Um, we will see in the final part uh, elements about quap regression. Thank you.